Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Unlock the Middle's platform, where we celebrate, dig deeply, find, explore anything we can find that makes education a better place for all of us. My name is Dean Packard, and I'm the principal of Charlton Middle School in Charlton, Massachusetts. Alongside of me, I have my good friend and co-host, Principal Chris Starczewski of Dudley Middle School, and we've got AJ, Sheikah, and Josh in the house with us tonight. We have got a great night planned for everybody. Chris, how are you? Everybody in the house, everybody at the round table, how are you as well? Man, you know, Dean, thanks for the intro to the show tonight. I am ready to talk about our topic on branding tonight. I can't wait for Josh to introduce it because he is an absolute master. We are riding into the last week of school here in the Dudley Charlton Regional School District, and I'm sure a lot of other districts around the country are either just finishing up or about to experience what we are. And the energy is high, as are the number of Zs circling around my head, <laughs> waiting for next Friday night so I can catch up a little bit. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well, but I want to kick this down to the corner and Josh and let him just fly with our intro. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Good evening, wherever, whatever part of the country you're in. Josh Dawad here, proud principal of Memorial Pathway Academy with Nishika up there on top of my screen, AJ here on the side of my screen, and those awesome gentlemen from Massachusetts. And today we all discussed to address one, I believe, one of the most important things that a campus administrator has on its plate, which is branding of their school. Because you will always be the face of the campus, whether you want to or not. Your APs will follow your lead. So it's crucial that the message that's out there comes from your fingerprints, from your phone. So branding is very crucial. Major companies, as we know, Nike, McDonald's, Office Depot, they brand everything. And everywhere you know, you got to get a quick catchphrase. And what will people know you by? So let's start off with that whole concept right there in regards to going around the table. And we'll start out there with AJ. What is your vision is being an AJ, for those brand new viewers that are joining us today, AJ is an assistant principal. This is first year tenure, but you know what? It's important that someone in AJ's level of administration is ready to brand the school to support the vision of the principal. So for me, it's always been important that we brand our schools and what we are. What do you all do there in New Jersey? Yeah, so social media for me is extremely important, right? It's uh, something I live on, you know, is how we got started with this and is how I got connected with you guys. So for me, in my interview process, I made sure to talk about the story of the school and how I put it out there for, for everybody to, to see. Um, as soon as I got the job, they handed over the Twitter account to me. So I have their Twitter, I have the Instagram, and I'm starting to build it up slowly. It's been hard this year, obviously, you know, being there half days, but uh, I have a couple of colleagues who send me pictures. They, they, they tag the district, uh, they tag the school on it, and I put it out there. So um, at Eastbrook MS, you know, you can see all of, our, all of our stuff there, and we're growing and we're building. And my principal straight up said to me, you know, I don't really do social media well. I need you to show me. So I think going forward, since it's mine, since we have the same vision of the school what we want, we are pushing out the same ideas. So if I'm tweeting something, I know he's behind me and I know that it's his words as well. Um, so, so for me, like, I love the fact that my teachers are on board. You can go see the teachers are tagged, the teachers are, are sharing, the teachers are retweeting. Uh, I love that because it really is telling the people out there and our community what our school is about and what our, our students are doing every day. So this year, AJ, what has been the vision for your campus? What have you promoted in regards to just, there's so many things. We could go into content, into student products, into UIL uh, activity, sports, athletics, there's so many. But mm -hmm. as an administrator on this campus, what has been your principles and your vision to promote out there? What what are you known for? Right now, I think we're just getting, just getting known for something. I, I, I don't know what that is yet because I think we're going in a lot of different directions. I think this year we really just wanted to show our students are back in the building and they're happy and they're safe and they're collaborating. Um, it's not about content. It's not about curriculum. It's about them and their happiness and their well-being and their social emotional learning. So I, I think going forward, we're going to build on that. But of course, then we're going to show the athletics. We're going to show our clubs. We're going to show our musicals and, and dance and all that kind of stuff. So right now we're just showing like the celebration of what the year is. Great. Awesome. Thank you very much, AJ. And taking it out there. Oh, go ahead. 
Josh, if I may, because yes. my man, my manners, and I'm absolutely probably I'm responsible for this. Sheikah Houston, first and foremost, at the table ah. for the first time ever. My fault. I absorbed that. Me too. I, I did a poor job. Sheikah, a little bit about yourself, and just tell us, tell everybody who's out there watching, just a little bit about you, because I know you lighten up this place. Oh, well, I am uh, going into this is my fifth year as principal of Chester Middle School. And uniquely, I have been at the same school, middle level. So people, some people think I'm a little wacky. Um, the whole 18 years of my career have been at the middle level. I was a teacher there for five years, um, assistant principal for eight years. And then this is my fifth year as principal. So rebranding the school was something that I was charged with when I became the principal of the school. We're a school of promise. So um, there were lots of things that needed to perceptions about the school that needed to be changed. So we uh, did a, a I think we did a great job um, as far as what the perception is now on rebranding and changing that message. What were some of those messages that you rebranded, Chica? And, she, and those of you that don't know her, please follow her on Tuesdays on Facebook. It's about success, breed success, and we all learn from each other. That's why we're here tonight on the Sunday. So, Sheikha, what, what, are, what are some of the things that you've done on your Facebook? Thank you. Um, so one thing that we had to change was, uh, and I know that you all know, being at the middle level, a lot of times we get blamed for just that natural progression of children no. changing. So <laughs> it's, it's not that um, necessarily that, you know, they're, might be picking some of the wrong friends and making some not so good choices. We kind of get blamed for all of that. So we had to start making sure that we were communicating frequently with our parents about, and that was one thing that I did um, prior to my sixth grade group coming up, big meeting with parents where they all came in. You know, this is what happens at the middle level with maturity, hormones, different things with with students. This is what you need to be mindful of. This is what you need to be monitoring. So we have three elementary schools that feed into us and they all had different focuses. One was an arts focus, one was a technology focus, and one was project based learning. So what I did in the rebranding, all of that fits under STEAM. So we became Chester STEAM Middle School. And that was the first message to parents. What you deemed important for your child is not going to be lost here at the middle school. You're not losing anything by them coming here because all of those focuses fit under STEAM. So our focus focuses are STEAM lead succeed. Um, we want to make sure that students are geared up for 21st century learning. We're preparing them for jobs that don't even exist with STEAM. Leader in Me helps combat some of that apathy, apathy that comes along with schools of promise. And then we're an avid school. I think Josh's school is an avid school. And some of you all schools may be avid schools as well. So we succeed through avid strategies. Great. Those are great things to promote out there, especially with the avid program. And let's now take it up there to some of the great things that I follow along all of you, you know, that I follow you guys. But let's go up to the Massachusetts area right there. Dean, talk to us about what's happening at your campus. Well, you know, Josh, thanks so, so much for that. Um, I, I have a great time um, telling the story of all the kids in my school and my, and my staff and celebrating. And one of the things as I'm listening to you guys here is I'm trying to incorporate student voice into the why because I want them to tell the story more than me. I, I think my constituents or my parents out there and, my, and the people that work with me, not for me, but with me, you know what? They hear me all the time. And you know what? And I, and I never want to get to that level of toxic positivity because I think it becomes a little redundant at times, but trying to find new avenues to be able to really say, hey, listen, this is a great place to be from the time you get up in the morning to the time you leave. We want this being your second home. We want this being a place where you can call home. And more importantly, know that everybody in our building is behind you and supports you. And that's what about, about building a learning culture is all about. And, uh, you know, using Twitter. Uh, I got on TikTok recently with kids and I, I, my dance moves are horrible. But man, I got so many likes and so many followers right away, which I think is fantastic because I'm absolute... Uh, 
I'm, I'm crazy on there. And, I, and again, what I mean by that is it just, it's so uncomfortable for me, but the kids make it comfortable, um, you know? And then Chris and I had started a segment a while ago, uh, just uh, bringing student voice into the picture of things. It's so powerful. And one of the things we have with Unlock the Middle that we want to do as we move forward and get into the summer and we get this network of principals together is really have some principals get kids and bring them on and talk about the topics that adults are talking about so we can see through their lens how they view it as well. So again, I'm hooked on that social media aspect. I get those tweets out every single day if I can. Um, I get something out on Instagram every single day. Um, we're just there. We're covering it. And uh, there's not much time to breathe after that. So I still have to be a principal during the day. I can't sit on social media all day. Like yeah. you, Josh. I'm sorry, man. Wow. Well, Chris, talk to us. The other, yeah. the other part. Yeah, thanks. I've got a great colleague and Dean, you know, same district, we're brother middle school. So we've got uh, a lot of parallels, but we do have our own unique identities as schools. You know, Dean's the Grizzlies, we're the Titans. So we've got our tag, you know, um, you know, at DMS Titans on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, my Twitter account at DMS Lead Learner, you know, trying to model our values and our culture uh, that we have. Um, but you know, when I took over five years ago, um, and I'm from this town, so I've got a, a deep familiarity with my district and with my middle school. Um, there are time honored traditions that need to remain. And, and much like Sheikah, you know, we got to make some shifts and we got to make some moves. So, you know, we want to honor the, the past traditions, you know, right on the front wall outside the principal's office facing the flagpole front parking lot two words, students first. That doesn't go away. That is what we're about. And I make sure that any interaction that we have is always guided by those two words. If it makes sense for the kids, we're going to do it. If it looks good on paper and it looks great in the program of studies, but it's not in the best interest of kids, no way. We're not going to spend the money. We're not going to spend the time and energy. The second piece is though, um, it, it came about through a previous principal, you know, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Pear, um, you know, bless his soul, he passed away since, but um, the idea of being better. Uh, we use those two words quite frequently. It's uh, another hashtag associated with the school, but we add the word together to it. Hashtag be better together, building a sense of community, a sense of responsibility, morning announcements, every day, interactions at lunch, interactions in the hallway, always about how you can contribute to one another's improvement and how you can take charge and ownership. And then, you know, the third thing is the social media tag that I really want folks to think about as they're posting from their classrooms or their teams is hashtag DMS rocks, because we do. We've got, we're respectful, we're optimistic, we build character and citizenship. We believe in kindness and we believe in success. There's our acronym for ROCKS, right? So we really want our kids to move forward and believe in those ideals and everything we do with them and with our community is to be promoted under those several tags and those ideas, you know, really about the DMS brand. And I like what you said about that because I think that that's been the vision that I bring to the table always is the belief system or what my why is. Because my why is my vision sitting in my chair and sitting in the assistant principals. When I was an assistant principal, um, I promoted on social me media also. And I and just like Chris said, it's, uh, it's also very important that I do believe in doing it to ad nauseum. Because I've been gone, and I don't know if you saw that I tagged a little video uh, to promoting tonight's show. It, I, I've been removed from my previous high school two years, and the valedictorian just talked about what I did in school. Yep. So you see, there, there there is a sense of being once you keep on promoting the message, especially in a school the size of 2,500. You guys have schools of 1,200. You got to keep on promoting that message because it's your vision as a leader to make sure that the kids believe it. Not only the kids, but your team members in the classroom. That's and by continuing promoting, because you know what, Ken Williams, if you follow him on social media, he's always talking about that school. Yeah, That school means two things. That school means that that school, and that school means that, oh, that school. Both schools need the same promotion mm -hmm. of positivity both of those things and if you are in that school and you're not on social media 
you're still renting your movies uh, at Blockbuster, and you're still buying your pants at Montgomery Awards. Because you know what? That school needs you to promote nothing but the best. Nothing but the best about your kids. Josh, I want to ask you something. How do you go about making those frames that you do when you send out your pictures? Because I think the audience out there, that's the deeper dive into this. Right. Because you know what? I can take a picture and flash it out there and put a, a little shiny caption on it. But right. man, you make them dance. So right. what's your secret? I, I was going to bring that up in uh, the next round of questioning. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and no, no, that's, that's fine. no, no, that's good. Um, what? It's very important that if you really want to do an effective job that you put in the time. You want to be Tom Brady, you got to put in the time. You want to be Pele, you got to put in the time. You got to be Kobe, you got to put in the time. Whatever it is, you got to put in the time. So I've learned, because I spend time on YouTube, learning about apps. On apps. And so on those apps, I highly, here goes, I'm going to write them just real quick. I don't want to get in the weeds with you guys, all right? But there's, because this, this could take a whole year on this. But there's three apps that I use religiously. The very first app that I use is Pick Play Post. Mm -hmm. That's when I when I do the uh, You're Out of This World to the uh, team members. If you see my last post about celebrating adults, I use the Pick Play Post. The ones that add a lot of uh, clip art to it, a lot of things for student of the week, I use Pick Save Pro. You got to pay for some of these, all right? You got to pay for this. Pick Save Pro. And to do, whenever I'm kind of like in the lazy mode and I don't got time to do things, I do uh, Mosho. Mosho, you just drop the, the pictures in there. It'll do the, the work for you when I'm really stressed for time. And then I also use, uh, oh, my bad, my bad. Viva Video, Viva Video. <laughs> so you just drop those in there. There's, I, there's a lot more, and I don't want to get in the week with you. But those are the ways to make sure that you accentuate the positive of social media. Thank you, Principal Cafella. Um, you need to always accentuate because when you're that school, remember, I walked in and I said this many times on these podcasts, the former school I was at was that school. Kids didn't have something to believe in, but mm -hmm. our kids believe in this. So I need to go to their life. I need to connect with them. And if I make the kids happy, guess who's gonna be happy? The parents are gonna be happy. And the parents are going to be more on my side in the big picture because they're seeing that I take care of their kids in a positive way, always looking for the positive, not only getting phone calls for the negative. But speaking about the negative, I know this is the next round of questions that I want to have for you. I know that a lot of our colleagues, both in the classroom and that sit in our chair, are apprehensive. What has been some of the negative aspect of social media that you face, the negative either that you've heard or that you faced yourself? Chica, let's start off with you. Definitely the students, you know, recording things um, that are inappropriate that they've done. It hasn't been like things that the teachers have been recorded doing. It's, it's them, you know, being out of sorts and um, posting it. Um, but we have built really uh, great relationships with with our parents. So um, even when I do hear, usually uh, somebody will message me or text me or parents say, hey, so-and-so put this on Snapchat with them doing something silly in the locker room or something. And so when I call the parent and say, could you ask them to please take that down? You know, they they do take it down. So, so that has been more of some of the negative things, but we usually can um, can get it under control with the parents. We've developed a partnership with them. What do you feel has been some hesitation by the adults? You mean using social media? Yes, to promote the positivity of your campus in South Carolina. Um, some of it probably, some of the teachers are a little apprehensive, like I'll hear, especially some of the newer teachers. Uh, for example, my course teacher, she has a great voice and she promotes herself with Instagram, but she'll say, the kids have started following me, so I shut my page down. And I said, well, what's wrong with that? You know, is it is it bad music? Is it something erotic? <laughs> And she said, no, it's good music. I said, well, if it's good, they need more to positive. Let them follow you. There's nothing wrong with that. So I think just not really understanding um, 
you know, where that line is sometimes or not, you know, feeling comfortable. But I think once she got the OK for me, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, then it was she was fine with it. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I think one of the barriers, and I think she could hit it on the head, is is that apprehensive nature of the uh, community negative. You know, the the keyboard warriors who are out there, the folks who log, log glom on to anything that's negative, and they make it grander by having this tremendous voice and thinking that they're an influencer. Um, the the gotcha person and. Uh, some teachers really want to stay distance from that and you know it for good reason. Uh, however, you know, we, what we lose sight of when we, we become, you know, challenged and, you know, we'll call it bullied, you know, into, into that fear, uh, we lose the opportunity to really share the outstanding levels of student engagement, the innovative thinking that our teachers have. And, you know, one of the missions that we've had over, over the years has always been eliminate the silo mentality, right? Mm -hmm. And how better to do it than this, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we do middle marvels to showcase uh, individual talents at the middle level classroom, right? And, and teachers talk about themselves uh, and they're a little nervous, but what I learn every single time we talk with a teacher in this platform is that what they do is not being done by everyone else. It certainly is not. And, and they think that it is. Um, so that apprehension, uh, putting yourself out there, being unsure of where the limits and the boundaries are and, um, actually not knowing how to have that discussion with the kids, Sheikha, mm -hmm. uh, for that chorus teacher to say, hey, when you follow me, mm -hmm. please like. If you've got a comment, go ahead and post it out there. Uh, feel free to share. You know, but mm -hmm. teachers don't know how to talk about that because that's a brand new medium. So right. I think, you know, professional development wise, we need to be conscious of that and not just say, hey, create a Twitter account and start following all these amazing people. Create an Instagram account and promote yourself. Here's how you do it. Mm -hmm. Here's why you do it. And here's how we can get together to do it. Kind of like AJ is doing, getting the teachers to send him the information. Hey, if you're not comfortable, I'll post it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, rolling in that direction. AJ, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think for my teachers, it's it's time. I think a lot of teachers don't want to add to, to, to social media because it's taking up time. They don't want to do it during the class. They don't want to do it while the kids are in front of them. So they get nervous and they, they, they wait and then they forget and then they push it back. So I think that the time is a big one. And I also, I agree. I think a lot of the teachers do not want to put things out there and then get criticized that that's not really what's going on in the classroom or, or, or they're just, it's not a clear message. I think a lot of the teachers are very nervous that somebody's going to make a comment that's negative or a kid's going to follow. You know, when I was in the classroom, I told my students, this is my Twitter account. You can follow if you want to. It's going to be a lot of education stuff, but I want you to follow to see how you use social media. Whoa. So. I, I, I'm going to push that. And I think professional development is extremely important going forward because we're talking about this. Our teachers need this. Our kids need this. They need to see what social media looks like. They need to see how to use it correctly. And they need to see that, that why we're not on there doing stupid things. We're on there being, being clear. We're showing exactly what we're supposed to show. They can model or we can model that and they can follow it. But I think that PD is going to be extremely important. Dean? You know, uh, AJ, you're right on. When you start talking about that, you model what you want to see out, out there. A uh, quick story for you. On my TikTok account, I had a, a student um, put a not so nice comment. Okay, so did I see it? Yeah, I saw it. So what did I do? I waited a couple of days to see if it stayed up there. And then I called them down and I said, listen, I'm not mad at you. I'm, I'm calling you down for a reason. And I'm not going to tell you anything more than, you know, you want to make sure you're always responsible for what you put out there for people to read. And the greatest part was I, I said, listen, I'm not going to tell you what to do because you know what? You have a right to an opinion, but when your opinion goes sour and it actually says something negative about somebody else, we have an obligation to help the kids understand that they need to grow and change from that. By the end of the story, uh, by, by the end of time together, the child said, I'm going to take it down immediately, Mr. Packard. And so it worked out really well. And I said, I'm not mad at you. You know what? Because there's a social thing tied to these things. They're trying to gain a little bit of momentum for themselves. Going back to the teachers, I think that the teachers still, they fear for what people might, how they might perceive them. Um, with my social media accounts, what I do is everything is kid-centered. Everything is educational centered. I try, and sometimes I'll put my family in there. But I mean, other than that, I keep, I just stay right in the middle of the fairway. 
And if you do that, it's okay. Not that you don't have the right to have an opinion on things, but you do have to train educators on, you know, separate, separate your personal from your professional. And what do you want to use? The, what do you want to use the tool for? So, it's, I mean, it's just, it's, it's actually fascinating to see, like I always tell my staff, this is PD on steroids. You can go anywhere you want, when you want, follow anybody you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. You'll get what you need in the moment if you want to find it, if you want to work for it. I, I, I pretty much piggyback on all of you what you said about our, our team members in the classroom about be hesitant for that reason. But I'd like to share something with you. I've been doing social media, I think, since 20, 2012, around there at the early stages of it. And I could count in two hands the negative comments I've had. I mean, I've done thousands of tweets, Facebook posts, Instagrams, but it, it's, it's all how you tailor it and you present about yeah. student success. So there should be no hesitation because this is the norm. Mm. I'll use it this time. This is the new normal, you know, now besides that other stuff with COVID, this is the new normal in regards to communicating with our audience. And it also helps us out in communicating with our parents. I love it. I love it because let me tell you, at my former school, and I don't know if I mentioned this before, but the kids would communicate with me. Whatever nonsense it was, they would tell me, hey, go on. Is today an A day or a B day? B day. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's the school's phone number? <laughs> Mr. Tovar, the parents. Mr. Tovar, I have not received the progress report. Can you help me with it? Sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sure, because we all know when we call those huge schools, sometimes they get bounced around. If I could provide them with the best customer service, yep. that's better for branding mm -hmm. or our campus. Yep. If they know I haven't, I haven't gotten a hold of my teacher X or teacher Y, it's my job to get that communication, that bridge together. So as the Prince campus principal, I believe that not only am I promoting the vision of my why, but I'm also making sure that I am student friendly, parent friendly, so that I could provide them the optimum customer service, especially during this pandemic. So I please, I wanna let you know, somebody has done a lot of it. Don't feel uh, awkward. Don't feel hesitant as long as you're promoting the positivity of kids because everyone is doing it. And now, Josh, just to kick in for a second, Hannah had a question here. Take a look at that question. I'd love to hear what your response to that would be. Well, you know what, outside, I, and I agree because I've come to from um, the current campus that I'm at has to do is with kids that come in from out of the, out of the different parts of the country. So we use different avenues. Once we get out of this section at my former campus, I, I intend on going out to doing home visits. And I do that. Not only that, but going to where they shop. We used to do community outreach at my former campus with our newsletter. And we would do every month at Walmart and our local food store. We would do an hour and a half passing out flyers with our newsletter. And then we'll go to another hour and a half. So we'll be out in the community making sure that they know the faces, we do all the important contact with the counselors and they know that I'm going to you if you don't want to come to me. It's about Great. putting in the time, especially if you're at that school. And um, before COVID, one thing that we did um, before school started back, you know, it's just in the, I'm in South Carolina, so it's really hot here in August. So we all got on a bus. We went around to all of the neighborhoods and we gave out um, just freeze pops. And we got a tremendous response from the community, you know, just, just happy to see us, you know, welcoming everyone. Uh, we had a lot of new teachers at that point, so they were happy to meet a lot who see who the teachers were, who their students were going to have. Um, and one thing that we were able to see, one of my teachers that has done a phenomenal job of building relationships with students, Facebook was lit up with his name, Mr. Irax, that's my dog, you know, all from years ago. But I mean, it was several, several, many, several posts up just him being able to build those relationships with students. But outside of Facebooks, because we were at a school of promise, um, some of our grandparents are not use, using uh, Facebook. So we use Blackboard. So I'm able to send the parents a text message, an email, and also a call simultaneously and the social media post as well. 
well, you know, one of the, sorry, you know, one of the ideas in Shika, you nailed it, is using using the old school communication methods, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that phone call, the newsletter that's posted and sent via email, uh, the text message directing folks to the website or a quick, mm -hmm. you know, 120 character reminder. Um, I'm local. So, you know, for me, branding is also about modeling those values of the school and the community. I'm a big athlete, uh, an athletic supporter uh, and a coach. But you'll see me in a in a DMS Titans jacket, you know, with with Mr. Star on the back, and I'll be wearing mm -hmm. a DMS baseball hat, or you know, in the winter, you know, my wool my wool cap with the DMS logo. Uh, you know, you talk to folks in line at the deli, you talk to folks, you know, out and about at Cumberland, Cumberland Farms, uh, you know, and just. Uh, you know, a sense of that community and civic pride. Josh, I love your idea. I'm thinking like, oh my goodness, we could set up a table at our local grocery store here in town and really? just have, you know, DMS Titan newsletter and our Titan Times newspaper that the kids have written, uh, you know, 17 pages of really amazing information about our school. We give it out to our kids and our teachers. Why don't we give it out to the community? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, brilliant idea. It is. And just to build up on what Hannah made a comment earlier, uh, before I left the previous school, we were I've been blessed to work with awesome faculties. And at the previous campus, we had done close to 1,200 home visits in three and a half years, 1,200. And this year at this campus, we we're at 183. And that's because of a lot of variables with this disease. True. But after that, we're going to keep going because you know what? That's truly the definition of kids don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Because we're at your door with a certificate. Boom! Talk about explosion. But now, branding is not only social media. I'd like to bring up this to, to the table, starting off with you, Dean. I believe totally in branding who I am. What do I mean by that? You've never seen me in a podcast without my school shirt. Only one time, I think I was in Florida. I was, I was doing the podcast. Yeah, I don't walk around with memorial stuff on, but whenever I go to central office um, to make our whatever meeting, I wear my school shirt, my long sleeve shirt with my logo, sporting my color, my mask, exactly <laughs> now with my mask. Everywhere I go, it's my school. I've, and then I've told my former assistant principals, you will play the part. You will represent our school accordingly dressed that way because they know that that is this school representing. So going around the table, starting off with you, AJ, again, how do you brand other than social media? I, I think the same way. And I, I, this is my first year in this district. I went nuts and I spent tons of money on hoodies, polos, t-shirts, just so you know the, the logo is there. Uh, I still have ways to go. I want to make sure that I, I do stickers and I want to do like... Um, was a sticker mule and I want to buy stickers for the staff. I want to push that out. You know, I want them to have the sticker on their notebook or on their computers and they're walking around. You know, the kids see it, the parents see it, that wherever they are, the people are going to see it. I want people to know that that we are staff members for East Brook Middle School. So, you know, social media is great. And one of the things is how do we get people to follow? Looking at my Twitter account, we don't have a huge number of followers. We have to push that out. So I want that logo to be prominent. I want the hashtag to be there. I want the Twitter handle to be there. I want to push everything together. So so for me, I, I love your shirts. I noticed your shirts. I didn't realize you had logos on your, your polos and your, uh, your long sleeves, uh, but that, that's crazy. So I don't know if I can do that, but <laughs> I definitely want my logo out there for everybody to see. Chica? Um, we also do t-shirts well and this was also prior to COVID. um we would have convocation it was always at my school because we have the auditorium so all of the staff members we would purchase um t-shirts for everyone and um it has our logo where the cyclones um or cms steam on that and our hashtag is cms limitless we got that from one of the um avid conferences because our focus is growth. So um, we are always talking to the students about um, in my town hall meetings with them, I always end with CMS, I see you, what do you see? Your answer should always be greatness. Um, and then on my town hall meetings, I'm always speaking to them about how they all have genius, you know, um, what our expectations are in them you know, meeting the mark and the same communications with the parents. So uh, some of the same things, T-shirts. Um, I actually um, 
got a graphic designer to make our logo for us. And um, it has the steam symbol in there, but with our cyclone uh, logo and she fixed it to where the three elementary schools that feed into our school is right underneath us. So they can actually see mm -hmm. that we're all, you know, fitting yeah. together. Dean. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm looking at this and saying uh, we have a school store. So we put out a couple of shirts each year with a theme on it and the kids buy them, the parents buy them. And it's a great way because we uh, tie in financial literacy with that. And it's a whole process of learning, which is really fun. But I still believe uh, it's a first impression syndrome. Everything goes through me and what I do and how I act and who I am and how I portray myself. And I think I spend pretty much every day when I do my announcements to the kids and I say, to find the best you, you can do. And that's what we look to do each and every day. And we inch better each and every day. And what that looks like on a shirt and what that looks like on a hashtag, what that looks like with a smile and a handshake, guess what? That permeates and creates ripples and people just love to get involved with it. Chris? Yeah, I, I what more can I say? I mean, I've written down more ideas than I currently do. So I'm looking forward to the next school year. I think one of the messages, and I was going to mention the morning announcements, you know, to the kids, um, you know, smart is not something you are. It's something you get educator, Jeff Howard, right? We want to teach the kids the idea that they have to work hard to continue to improve and be better. And we want them to actually make the day a great day for learning. We don't want to say have a great day make it a great day because you've got conscious choice and ability and opportunity. But that kind of ties into the whole kind of mindset of school, of self, you know, uh, getting the getting the staff jackets with the logo and their name on the back. Wear it out in the community, you know. Come to the student store. Um, when we've got spirit days, get those photos out there. Send copies of the photos to the kids in their email and let them put that out on their own social media account as well. Um, you know, school dances and the like, doing all those types of things to get their own personal story built in a positive way beyond the uh, the selfies at the table, you know, at the, uh, uh, yeah, don't even get me started on that stuff. But one little quick thing I want to throw in there, Josh, do you allow students to take the camera and do this and get it, get it back to you? So like I had a liaison last year who was pretty good at it and she would go around taking all kinds of pictures and tag them back to me. Have you gotten to that level yet? I, uh, not at this campus, at the former campus, kids would share stuff with me yep. and they, they would uh, they would message me either on Instagram, on Twitter or Facebook. And I would get whatever I felt was appropriate for what I put out. Correct. And so if I felt it was appropriate and I would say, thank you, so-and-so, thank you, so-and-so. And so kids would share stuff uh, with me to put out there. So yes, but it's not a concerted effort. They just wanted to be part of the presentation especially if they saw me at all the events, they go, Tobar, I know you can't go here. We'll send you pictures. Got it. Teamwork. And we didn't do it this year, but um, just because of all of the rules and plexiglass and everything. But last year we had a CMS news team and they would go around and interview teachers. That one young lady, uh, Talea, she had her own segment called Street Talk and the kids loved it. So um, they, you know, were excited about seeing it featured. Uh, one of my staff members, she was a um, video um, videographer, so she knew how to put it all together and uh, tweak it and everything. So the CMS news team was something that was like they were able to put their voice forward. And but we would all participate. I think I had one little dance segment, like the mop. They like to see us do silly things. So we did all of that stuff just to, um, you know, contribute. But they they loved it. And I would just like to say, piggyback on what some of the gentlemen had said, that um, it, it, she kind of like threw like a 30-minute morning announcement in the little video that I showed you. But I, like, I, you've heard me say this. I believe it's crucial. And those seven, six minutes, seven, six minutes every morning, those are my minutes of how I'm going to start the day. And that's where I always say the same thing. And so depends on what school I've been at. There's a vision I throw out there. And I always say the same thing. Go conquer. Live your dreams. Overcome your obstacles. Whatever the hashtag is, I say it in the announcements. And if you've seen our videos for Student of the Week, we repeat it. We repeat those things. It has to be part of the body. It has to be everyone saying it so that we believe in what that is, which is student-friendly support. 
So in closing, I know we're, we, we're hitting up there towards the, that mark. Just uh, some closing comments before we share out our Twitter accounts. I think that would be a great thing because if you're the first time you've ever seen this, please follow us. Not because we want followers, but because I believe that we bring a lot of great things to the table that our profession is all about, bag, borrow, and steal. We know that. We know that. So closing comments on branding. AJ. Uh, you know, I, I think it's more important now than ever before. I, I think getting the message out there, I, I think it's it's something that all school leaders, teachers, even students need to do. Because I, I think, if, you know, somebody wrote before, if we're not telling the story, who's telling the story for us? Chris. Yeah, you know, as we sit down and we think about the learning recovery that we're entering into right now, we have to think about opportunities to showcase and identify, you know, not only the talents and the abilities that the kids and the faculty and staff have, but the opportunities to celebrate steps along the way towards that uh, reintegration into that learning recovery model. You know, I'm, you know what my beliefs, those of you who have watched, you know what my beliefs are about the statement learning loss. Mm -mm. There's too much resiliency. There's too much overcoming of adversity that occurred in these past 15 months. But if we don't showcase how those skills are being applied and utilized on a daily basis to move these kiddos forward at the middle level in particular, we are going to lose a great opportunity to re-educate our parent base and quite honestly, society as to the mission and purpose of our schools. Dean. We've got one shot to get out in front of this. We are in our seat because of who we are and what we do. We want to be there. We want to tell the story before others can tell it for us. But more importantly, we want to celebrate the story each and every day with all the people inside of our buildings, whether it's our cafeteria workers, whether it's bus drivers, whether it's custodians, whether it's kids, whether it's parents, anybody involved with our learning community deserves to be recognized at some point. And that's what we need to make sure we do. And always don't put, get ourselves out of the equation. We are the conduit. We are the we are the people who just get it out there. Keep selling, keep driving, because we got we are we have a great position, guys. We are in leadership, and leadership empowers and celebrates others. Chica. Well, thank you all for having me. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I think that um, branding is is really deeply rooted in uh, making sure that your culture. Is, is in the right place. And so it's a, a whole lot more than, um, you know, just the surface is it's really deeply rooted in making sure that culture is where it needs to be. And uh, for me, and you talked about that, Ken Williams, when he talks about that school, my school was that school, not the positive one at first, it was on the other end of the spectrum. And uh, what was so encouraging to my staff members and uh, myself and my students and the work that we had done is when um, my colleague at the high school said, what, what are y'all doing at the middle school? Because whatever you're doing, I can tell the difference and it's working. So, you know, that's what you want to hear from the school that you're feeding into that the work that you're doing with your students and that culture shift is really effective and it's taking place and then what you're doing showcasing that on social media is showing the world the work that you've done so just to encourage anybody who feels like they're at that end of the spectrum you can get it to the other end awesome and just before we share out our our uh, twitter accounts i like just to say two things look guys if you haven't done it before just start slow everyone tells like a diet just start slow don't go starving 16 hours, you know, intermittent fasting. Don't do that. Start slow. Do a post a week. But once you do that, be consistent with that post. It's about consistency because you're training yourself that discipline because you've never done it before. And those of you like me that go up and down with diets, you know it's about the consistency. So you need to be consistent with your post and why you're posting. So I'm only going to post on Mondays because we're going to make it a marvelous Monday. Or on Wednesday, we're going to pop through the week. Or on Thursday is college day because we're trying to advertise our campus. On Friday, we're going to do Pride Day because you know what? Every school celebrates Pride Day. Whatever your day might be, just start off with that one day and be consistent. And if you feel comfortable, then you go into your other platforms. If it's only Facebook, if it's Twitter, if it's Instagram, whatever it is. But just start because your customer... Our customer is living here. 
They're living here. And if you're not reaching them, someone else is reaching them. And this is another way of education using this. So I'll be posting uh, on my on my page all the apps that I use to do my different um, posts. But in closing, Chris, talk to me about your Twitter handle. Hey, it's been out there since uh, 2012 at DMS underscore lead learner at DMS underscore lead learner. And of course, you know, the plug for this, uh, this little platform at unlock the middle. Uh, both of those, Dean and I are both very active. Dean. I'm at CMS principal one and uh, it gets loaded up each week with a lot of things, a lot of positive messages and uh, follow along because I retweet a lot of great things from other people as well, because that's what we do. The network is huge and it's building all the time. Ashika. Um, on Twitter, it's just at Sheika Houston. And um, on Facebook, it's Sheika Houston and create and educate dot LLC. And Mr. AJ. Uh, so personally, my Twitter is at AJ Bianco. Uh, my school is at Eastbrook MS. And then I also tweet from uh, refle at Reflect Ed Pod and at Podcast PD. So those are all the places you can find me. And you can follow the Jaguars at, M at MPA underscore Go Jaguars. MPA underscore Go Jaguars. It's been a great evening tonight. Learning from all these leaders. We got South Carolina, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Texas. Everybody here. Let's keep on learning. There's other podcasts tonight. Keep an eye out. There's a lot of PD going on. That's what Twitter is all about. Thank you very much. We'll see you next Sunday. 7 p.m. Follow us. Have a good night, everybody. Be well. Good night.